Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Hello learners, my name is Stephen Karyungi. I welcome you to our today's lesson. And today we are discussing the topic of nitrogen and its compounds. And specifically, uh, we are discussing the laboratory isolation of nitrogen from the air. So uh, we say that uh, laboratory isolation of nitrogen gas from the air is a small scale experiment that can be conducted in the laboratory. And uh, this is whereby we do not prepare the nitrogen gas, but we isolate it from the air in a small scale. And this is as shown in the diagram that we are going to have here. So the diagram is on the uh, laboratory isolation of nitrogen from the air. And uh, to label the diagram, uh, first of all, we have an empty jar here, or we have an empty aspirator at the beginning, and then we put water into that aspirator. <clears throat> so as the water fills this particular aspirator, because this is actually water, so as the water fills the aspirator, the air that was initially inside this jar is expelled, and it is expelled in this direction, whereby it gets into the second jar, the second aspirator, which contains concentrated sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide concentrated sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide so the work of this particular chamber here is to absorb any carbon four oxide that is in the air so the carbon four oxide is absorbed at this point. Uh, and the reason for that is because uh, sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide, they are strong bases, and therefore they can easily absorb an acidic gas, such as carbon four oxide. So as the air leaves this second jar, it is now less carbon four oxide. Then in the next uh, uh, combustion tube, is a combustion tube where we have copper turnings. We have copper turnings there. Uh, those copper turnings are heated. So there is heat. And you find that when the copper turnings are hot and the air is passing there, those copper turnings are going to react with oxygen. So they are going to be oxidized. And of course, they'll be oxidized to copper 2 oxide. So uh, those copper turnings will not react with nitrogen and also with the noble gases. So the nitrogen continues and is collected over water as nitrogen gas. So we have nitrogen gas collected like that. So that diagram basically shows uh, uh, how laboratory isolation of nitrogen gas 
from the air can take place. We say the first point, the, the jar is empty or the aspirator is empty, you put water. As the water gets in, it expels the air. The air is expelled uh, towards uh, this direction or towards the right, whereby uh, it's then taken to the second uh, aspirator that contains concentrated sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide. Here, carbon four oxide is absorbed. Then the air minus the carbon four oxide is then passed into a combustion tube that contains hot copper tannins or heated copper tannins. Copper tannins react with oxygen that is in the air, leaving only nitrogen and also the noble gases. So the nitrogen is collected in the gas jar over water as shown in the diagram. So <clears throat> just to explain that, we are saying that uh, water is used to expel air from the first aspirator or jar. The air then enters the second aspirator containing concentrated conch sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide. And you are saying that here carbon four oxide is absorbed. Is absorbed because it is an acidic gas. It is acidic. So acidic gases will be absorbed by the strong bases here. Yeah. And then, then the air is passed through heated copper tannins where oxygen is absorbed. Oxygen is absorbed. So you can say that uh, we can show the, the reaction in jar number two. You can say jar number two. So you can say here, this is a aspirator two. And also call it that to be consistent the reaction in aspirator 2 we are saying that uh, the carbon 4 oxide gas combined with concentrated sodium hydroxide solution and this one forms a sodium hydrogen carbonate solution if it is a uh, Potassium hydroxide, if you use potassium hydroxide because you are saying that we can use either, then you'll find that uh, we'll form potassium hydrogen carbonate uh, solution. <coughs> so I think that is okay. Then we go to the reaction in the combustion tube. Reaction in the combustion tube. We are saying that uh, here oxygen is absorbed. So we find that uh, the copper tannins combine with oxygen gas. And then we form copper 2 oxide, which is a solid. To balance the equation. So you can be asked what are the observations made initially. Uh, the copper is red brown, but uh, after combining with oxygen, uh, we form a black solid, which is copper 2 oxide. So that is the observation that will be made here. Then we say that uh, nitrogen is then collected 
over water because it is slightly soluble in water very slightly soluble in water so we can also say that this nitrogen contains impurities contains impurities of noble gases remember the noble gases also do not react here and also do not react there they are unreactive so they'll also be collected together with the nitrogen so we are saying that the nitrogen collected is not a hundred percent pure so we are saying that uh, this nitrogen contains impurities of noble gases that is is not pure so that is basically about the isolation of nitrogen from the air in a small scale so we'll have an assignment on this our assignment says that uh, So the assignment, the first question, during laboratory isolation of nitrogen from the air, explain why air is passed through A, concentrated sodium hydroxide, and B, heated copper tannings. And number two, explain why the nitrogen collected from the isolation setup is not 100% pure. So we are going to stop there until next time. Goodbye. Thank <music> you.